Okay, so here's a, uh, a one of the higher uh, graphs. It's on the cover of the conformal field theory, yes. As you can see, that's a D graph, right? So it's a triangle. If you uh, took a triangle, actually, you can get this as a, as a wrap in town. Yes, for, I think it's a Greek uh, uh, wrapping or so. You, you, you take a triangle, you cut it in three, so you get something like this. And uh, so you take a triangle, you cut it in three. This is one third of a triangle. Yes, this one gets joined. So these two get together and you get a kind of pocket here. Right? And uh, the middle point, the center point here, if there is a point in the center, the center point will separate according to the action of Z3 which means that it will give here three vertices. Yes, the one uh, uh, alpha and alpha bar, those are the representations. Uh, those are the representations of Z3, right? That's the thing you see on the blackboard. So that's, that's how graph D looks, a higher graph D. Yes, and uh, Today we'll show, we'll give proofs for the formula of roots. I happen to have here comp by computer, done by computer, um, the roots corresponding to this. So as you saw, the, uh, the Francesco and Zuber uh, uh, worked on, uh, I mean, they found candidates for the higher Dunkin diagrams. Uh, the, whole yellow book, I just looked through it for something and I realized it's mostly about uh, this um, attempt to introduce uh, higher, higher uh, mathematics uh, because they had found the candidates for uh, higher Dunkin diagrams. And they gave the bottle of champagne for the classification, which I got in Argentina around 2000, but uh, what they couldn't do was exactly this. So they got stopped at this, so everything else is there. They, they couldn't do the uh, Euclidean uh, space uh, with higher roots. Yes, because you cannot get, just use a graph as for angles like, uh, uh, like usual. Instead, uh, I happen to have the ribbon as I was telling you, I had given a course on quivers, and I realized that the quivers could be done much better with a ribbon. And the ribbon had, in particular, a natural construction of roots, which is what we did in the first part of the course, yes? And uh, here you have a, uh, the roots. What, what you have here is the inner product. Do you see? You have this particular, the tip, the tip of the, uh, of the D diagram, the dots stand for zero, yeah? The diagram is tripartite in this case. It's oriented, actually. There are some arrows, the usual way for SL3, yes? So you see it's made of uh, SL3. Now remember the graphs of uh, type AD are made of legs, which legs are what? Representations of legs, legs, legs. Representations of ASU2 exactly, yes? So the Dinkin diagrams are made of, of legs which are representations of ASU2 and some triple points, right? And uh, these, so the representations of SL3 would be typically made out of SL3s, right? And you can see that here, up to a certain point, they look like SL3, yes? So you can check this with uh, with invariants as the sure lemma, if there are no intertwiners, they would stay all the time like SL3s, yes? And you'd get uh, some triangle. And if there is an intertwiner, then uh, things start to break, yes? Or things start to glue. 
So the intertwiner may, may make two, two, uh, uh, two representations equivalent, yes? And this one breaks, as you saw. So, um, so that's what you can check with the theory of intertwiners. Now, we haven't done the theory of uh, that theory, which is, uh, but it will be in the book. This is a modular, uh, uh, it's some uh, topological quantum field theory modular theory with augmentation and so, but uh, uh, so we'll concentrate on this crystallographic thing. So look, here are the neighbors, do you see? The inner product with the neighbors of this, so this is of course like in SL2. Yes, these inner products are two here, yes, and uh, the neighboring is, uh, uh, so a lot of zeros, yeah? Remember, this is a little bit like for SL2, yes, where the inner product was one with the immediate neighbors. Uh, so basis is a root with uh, the inner product of this root with, uh, with others on the graph D. So then you go, you, you go further, and uh, uh, this is a period. Uh, you can, I have highlighted here the mirrors. You can see the mirrors, right? Uh, and uh, the space between mirrors. And the, uh, the space between mirrors, the vial mirrors, is a graph AN, the corresponding graph AN, yes? So if you count the vertices and so on, exactly our big triangle there is the one in red here and blue. Yes, uh, we are going to use a convention in uh, electricity, which is that red is uh, plus and blue is minus. Otherwise, you'll get in trouble. Uh, and uh, uh, here's the, uh, some, here are some paths on a graph uh, can you see? So this is fusion, yes? This is what we call fusion. On a graph, what graph is this? What type? According to what we just said, it's of type. What letter? A, that's it, yes? This is a graph of type A. It has up to symmetry two, two vertices here. Do you see the top and the, the middle one? Yes? And uh, this is a fusion, so, so you see you take here the top, yes? And you tense it with all the irreducibles. Well, the top is a trivial one. So what are you going to get when you tensor with each irreducible? You're going to get exactly that irreducible, do you see? So when you tensor with this one, you get this one, yes? And so on. Up to here where they are cut off, yes? And then they're continued here by reflection. By the way, the reflection formula is called the Katz-Walton formula. So if you, if you look for it, you should look for this, yes? Which we have used, which we are using all the time. Uh, and here is the other vertex. Uh, so you see here the tensoring gives you something more interesting. Uh, why does... Uh, why does the tensoring here give you, uh, with various representations, uh, why do they give you just two things? Because the third one is on the mirror, yes? Do you see the third one would be somewhere here, where my cursor is, yes? And that's outside, that's on the mirror, yes? So the statement now is that uh, if you take these six things, so uh, we have three statements to prove today. We'll go as fast as possible, but I, I wanted to give you the background here. Yes, the statement number one is the following. You take this fusion, you see, it has alternating signs, right? Because of this, uh, as shown by this cas walton formula, the reflection changes sign, yes? Okay? And now you take these, these, exactly these numbers in every triangle, red and blue. You change the sign and you move them to the center. Yes? So you're going to move this one here. Yes, you're going to multiply this one by... by uh, uh, minus one, and move it here as well, yeah? 
and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So what number are you going to get at the top? Six, yes? Which is the order of the vial group, the subjacent vial group, yeah? The underlying vial group. And uh, so you're going to, so this means that the, this, uh, this root inner product with itself will have length, uh, will have, uh, will give you six, yes? And the other numbers that you get uh, are, uh, uh, are going to be the inner product of this root with the other roots, yes? So it's a sum of all these, and similarly for, for the others, yes? So the sum of all, so here's a vial vector rho, do you see? Yes? Uh, representations are tensorial. You tensor two representations, or you multiply two representations to get others, yes? So in this red, uh, the red uh, thing here works like what part of real numbers? Like the non-zero or positive real numbers, yes? Positive real numbers or positive integers, and these would be the negative integers, yes? So this is a part that's closed under, under multiplication, yes? And the mirrors are like zero. Yes? So the, the center here is the additive center of, uh, of uh, roots and weights. Yes? And we have, as usual, an exponential. The exponential is the most important uh, function in mathematics. Why? Because it connects what you learned in the first grade with what you learned in the second grade, exactly addition with multiplication, yes? It changes addition into multiplication and, and uh, backwards, right? So it's the same thing here. When you write a representation, sigma of uh, W, you know, you, W is additive, but sigma W is multiplicative. Yes, so that in itself is a form of exponentiation. And that's what appears in the, in the, vial, in the vial formula. Very good, so now the statement once again is that if you add all these things, you, you translate them into the origin and you add them, or you simply translate with this vial vector rho uh, with sign. So you translate here up, and then, for instance, this one, you translate it with W, this is rho is downwards here, yes? You translate it with W of rho, with a vial element of rho, yes? and then you move it back down with rho, and you add them, then you're get, going to get uh, here six, yes, and all the others. And there are the two series which I gave you for, uh, uh, for, uh, the, uh, uh, for the numbers that you get here, yes? In the series, uh, the series are indexed, are given by a matrix which is exactly this uh, graph times itself. Yes, so it's a matrix which has on each side the graph vertices. Yes? So a graph consists of edges, so it has zeros and ones, or twos, uh, so some natural numbers which give you the edge between two vertices. Yeah? The matrix. And what the series gives you is, uh, is the number of uh, edges, if you want. I mean, if you start here with a one, what are you going to get? at T1 times T2, let's say, yes? So this is T1 is this direction, T2 is this direction, yes? So it, it gives you the map from here down here, yes? That will be the coefficient of T1, T2. It tells you if you put a one here, what you get. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the... Uh, uh, that's what we want to prove, and uh, this would be the first one. Will be a, a, a formula which we did before for SL2. The proof will be uh, fairly similar, so I won't uh, insist too much. So the the uh, statement is the following theorem: uh, the projection onto the fusion of uh, 
uh, of uh, the chronic uh, symbol at I alpha. is equal to n to some minus d. This is the size of the period. Inverse uh, times the sum over the vial group. And I'm going to lift a little bit the, the screen here the sum of the vial group of uh, um, fusion of, uh, uh, and here there's a sign, epsilon of W, that's a sign of W, the fusion of uh, uh, I plus rho, uh, I, let's say, minus rho plus W rho. Alpha. Uh, that means exactly that if you take, uh, if you take uh, here, that if you take, uh, this one here, and you project it onto, onto fusion. Remember, the fusion was biharmonic. We'll discuss this a bit later. What you get is a sum of uh, 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 something like this. You know, the whole picture shifted with up and sideways. This is rho here. And uh, this is W of rho. So you shift it and you, you bring them uh, into one. And, and so you should get six. Uh, that projection should be exactly the vector that you get as roots, which is uh, something like the one here. You see a six here and everything else. Yes? And... Uh, uh, what we show is, first of all, uh, now this here, so this projection, in order to show this, the, um, uh, it's enough to take the inner product with what we project onto. So take inner product with fusion. Yes, show that, uh, show that uh, the inner product with any fusion is the same. And uh, this is by a nice theorem with perpendiculars, which was found beautifully 2,000 years ago. So, in geometry. Uh, so here, uh, the inner product of, uh, uh, let's take some arbitrary fusion. So we take uh, chronic uh, of I alpha inner with uh, fusion of uh, J beta. This is going to be uh, the fusion from J beta to I alpha. And that's a dimension of the home from uh, sigma j minus i tends alpha to beta. By the way, here, just to make sure here, i, I is, is a point on the weights. i is in the weight lattice. and uh, alpha and beta and so on are in uh, the vertices of G. That's a graph, yes? 
So this tensoring happens in G. In the graph G, yes? Now in the case AN, the graph G is exactly a piece of the uh, a piece of the weight lattice itself, yes? It's a piece which lies within a mirror, within an alcove, surrounded by mirrors. Okay, and uh, now we have to show that this is equal to, so let's put here n to the power d, and this, we should show that this is equal to um, the sum over the vial group of uh, epsilon of W times the fusion of uh, from I minus rho plus W rho alpha to uh, the inner product with fusion of J beta. And this uh, latter thing is uh, this sum here is uh, the sum now, you see here we have an inner product, and the inner product is done uh, summing over a period, which is that it has size n to the d. The period, by the way, is a torus for these things. Yes, you, uh, the period here uh, on, on, this, on, on our pictures would be uh, a, two, two of these rhombuses. Yes? two of these rhombuses with the, uh, the edge taken only once. So you peel off the edge. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the size? What's n here? Can you see? The size of the period. One, two, three, four, right? No, one, yes, one, two, three, four. And, uh, well, the period, the size of the period is five, yes? Can you see? It's five by five. So if you move this rhombus a little bit, you'll get in the middle exactly, uh, uh, exactly these uh, four things. And why is it five by five? The size of this triangle is two. Yes, so the n would be here. Uh, so the n, let me see. The, uh, uh, oh, one, two, three, maybe I'm, uh, uh, I am uh, off. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it's five, definitely, the period. So when you have here, one, two, three, four, five, yes. And um, it's two plus three. Yes, two is for the graph, the size of the simplex in the graph, and you have three because there are three mirrors around, yes? So every mirror adds an extra one. So n is five here. And here you would have n squared. Very good, so we have this, and uh, now we have uh, the sum uh, so we, we need to do this uh, point by point. So this would be the sum of uh, um, uh, W in the vial group of epsilon of W. And now we need to sum these things at every point. So this is the sum 
over all uh, K and gamma. These are in the period. Um, of uh, the fusion from I minus rho plus W rho alpha to K gamma. times the fusion, these are numbers now, from J beta to K gamma. And remember, these are done by uh, Holmes. Yes. So uh, this is equal to the sum of... Uh, um, the dimension of home from sigma, we have that index there, uh, k minus i plus uh, rho minus w rho. And there's an epsilon of W. Minus W rho to uh, tensor alpha to gamma. And then we have a, uh, a dimension of Hom from uh, sigma J minus K then so gamma to beta. And uh, this is a sum of, now you see, you, you make here a tensor, so you go from alpha, you tensor, this is some graph, yes? You tensor, you take the, uh, what would be the reducible objects, gamma, yes? And then you tensor these with something else to get with to beta, yes? So this is the same as tensoring with both. With both these things in front. So the sum of epsilon W times uh, home from sigma uh, j minus k tens uh, sigma k minus i plus rho minus w rho tens uh, alpha to beta, yes? Now, by the way, I should point out here, since our goal is to understand also how these things would be used in, uh, in uh, something like physics, yes, uh, this is the important tensorial property in uh, quantum field theory, namely that if you, if you go from uh, uh, A tends uh, B, you go from A tensor B to X, so this is home from A tensor B to X. And this is home from X tensor C, home from X tensor C to D. Yes, and if you take the sum here over all X, and you put here a tensor product. So this is a tensor product here between the two parts. Then you get exactly the home from A, B, C to D. 
Yes, by the way, they should be oriented something like this. Yes, so this here is inside its home from A tends B tends C to D, yes? And this is a tensorial property of Holmes. Yes, it shows you that if you cut this square in two, you get the tensor product of the two halves summed over the label in the middle, yes? Sum over the label in the middle is exactly, this is the uh, matching. Yes, and the tensor product, yes, shows that this is tensorial, which means that it's QFT. Yes, it behaves exponentially. And conversely, as I was showing, if you assume some exponentiality, uh, some tensorial behavior uh, on a piece of napkin, if you remember on a square napkin that was in the first day, then you get exactly some uh, Hopf algebra and the representations of those, that, uh, those, that Hopf algebra could be put exactly as these homes, yes? So these edges would become irreducible representations and then these are homes. So basically, uh, that's the general structure. If you have QFT, then uh, the Hilbert space needs to be made out of homes. So you need to fill the space with maps, yes? And uh, you have some vector spaces on the boundary, objects here on the boundary, and you, you, uh, you just, uh, you have a computation in the middle. So here, this computation is a home. Yes, so that's exactly the image that we had at the beginning. I just wanted to alert you that this is what, what we did here and what we used here. We shouldn't do just simple computations. And now we use again this uh, katz walton formula, well, with the tensoring, so it, it goes uh, back to Raka. I think that the, uh, that the tensor product here is a sum now over all the x's in the weights of... Uh, uh, sigma j minus k. Remember that this is, so this is with multiplicity, with multiplicity. I remember that if you have a representation, then it has some multiplicities, which are something like one, one, one on the boundary, then two inside. Uh, this is for SL. SL2, yes, threes and a four or something. In, the, in this case, it would, I think, because of the shape, it would end with a three, three, three. Yes, something like this. And uh, that when you do the sum here over with a vial group, uh, or this is your vector, vial vector rho, yes, down. And if you take the the sum, the uh, delta alternating of uh, these weights, uh, what you get, so this, this here would be, here this would be your sigma, let's say, so this is your uh, sigma alpha, so this is your alpha of waves of sigma alpha, so this would be the highest weight. What you get is exactly plus one and minus one rho apart, yes? Only you'll get here, for instance, what? Since this is supposed to be rho, this has sign negative one, and here you get the sum of neighbors is a negative one here, right? Can you see? So here you'll get a negative one. And if you apply this, uh, 
what I call the, alter, the virus alternating Laplacian. If you apply it in the middle some way, if you take the sum here, the alternating sum with signs, then you get everywhere else. Yes? You'll get zero, exactly. Yes? So that's, that's Weil's uh, dimension formula. So the numerator are exactly this one, negative, so plus one here, negative one, plus one, negative one, yes? And here plus one. So this is a vile, uh, vile numerator. And this sum here is a vile denominator. Any questions? Uh, the the vile formula is, uh, from what I have seen in the literature, is in uh, good need of uh, of a new and elegant proof. So, so uh, that's something that you should keep in mind. Okay, sigma. So we have the sum of all x's. And the tensor product was the following. If you tensor alpha with beta, then you put, if you want to see how it decomposes, then you put here all the weights of beta, of sigma beta, yes, with multiplicities. And this is a decomposition of the tensor product. That's a statement. So you just take one, the weights of one, you uh, shift them with the other one, and you take them as highest weights, yes? So the only thing is to reflect them back in the positive, uh, in the positive part, yes? And the difficulty, because uh, remember that this, this took uh, something like 20 years to prove, this is the formula for, uh, even for the case AN, yes, for SUN, yes. Uh, it took so long because what was needed was a positive formula, yes? So a formula of the things which remain after the cancellations. Yes, and that's a little Richardson formula. And also remember that it took even longer, maybe 70 years and going, unless uh, one of you solves it, or one of us solves it. Yes, uh, there's still no positive formula in the, uh, in the uh, quantum case. Yes, so the, it's a big uh, open problem, beautiful open problem to find some combinatorics which gives you every irreducible in the tensor product cutoff, exactly like we do here, yes, uh, to, to get those numbers one by one, yes. You see, uh, one day when you, uh, when you feel in really good shape, Think of it, start to do cancellations, and, uh, and try to guess the rule of what remains. Okay, very good. So here we have x in the weights of sigma j minus k of, uh, of uh, uh, dim home. So this is dim here, the dimension, everything. These are just numbers, yes, dim home of sigma x plus k minus i plus rho minus w rho tensor alpha and beta, yes? And uh, uh, here there's an extra sum with all that we had before, so this thing is going to be, let me lift this, Maybe I, I will leave, us, leave it down and go on the other blackboard.
So what we're going to have is uh, uh, sum of the sine again, and uh, this would be uh, now Now here, uh, do you see we, we uh, this is a shift, this is a shift here, this is in the weights of uh, sigma j minus k, yes, and this one with plus minus, this one is, uh, is exactly the alternating Laplacian. Yes, it's a sum over all translations with W rho, yeah? So what we're going to get, we don't have the epsilon W anymore, that's part of the trans. So we will have actually an epsilon w because the result has a, a nice sum in it, and it will be the dimension of uh, home from. Let's take the translation, which is k sigma k minus i plus. Uh, what was it? K minus I plus rho. And uh, uh, plus uh, these. So, and we have uh, W, and we'll put a minus because we have the minus there for the alternate example. Otherwise, W. Uh, K plus W, sorry, of J minus K plus, and here's a minus, minus rho. Tense uh, alpha to beta. And uh, here, there is a sum, and among other sums, there is a sum of all k's. And you see what happens here. For w is equal to one, k will simply, k will, uh, will disappear, yes? <coughs> so this is a sum. <coughs> so this sum corresponds to w is equal to one. <clears throat> so this is the sum of sigma j minus uh, i, but this is a sum over k. Sigma j tends minus i, you see everything else t simplifies, tends alpha to beta, plus the sum of a W different from one of sigma, exactly what we have there, K minus W K, uh, K minus W K uh, minus I plus, uh, so we have a lot of things here, plus WJ uh, minus W rho, and they don't matter, tensor alpha to beta, they don't matter, and this is here the dimension of home, and here also the dimension of home, and these don't matter because this would cancel cancel over period. And this sum over k, this is going to be n to the power d. Because k doesn't appear. 
Yes, so we have finished, uh, we have finished the proof. So these, uh, so the sum over k here, let's make sure that the sum over k cancels over period. Now, um, remember the formula that we had it's uh, the formula that we had, at least let's do the preparation for the next time, which were that uh, the uh, fusion, the fusion matrices uh, were the following. It was a sum, let me put the, the picture, oh. The picture good for astronomy. So let's see, maybe we have in the preview something. Ah, yes. Uh, this is the, uh, this is a formula that we have for, for uh, uh, roots. Look, uh, look what we have here. The generator is U1 plus 1 over U1, yes? Uh, remember, so this, this uh, uh, encompasses a spectrum of the graphs uh, ADE, uh, which was always of the form quantum two somewhere, yes? A unitary plus one over a unitary. And uh, if you write the generator like this, then this is a series for roots here. And uh, you can simplify it. And this is a series for essential path, yes? These have a certain, uh, uh, have a certain feeling to me of the essential paths, especially of the uh, uh, famous formula of Hermann Weil. I mean, it's the same spirit. It's, they're not the form that formula at all. But um, the surprising thing about the Weil formula was the following at the time, that if you look at multiplicities, uh, here for a representation. Do you see the multiplicities are a very symmetric thing? Yes, they are symmetric with respect to the vial, vial group. You have the same one, one, one. What vial did was use an anti-symmetric, so write them as a quotient of anti-symmetric functions, yes? And he started this way uh, a whole theory of uh, of the fundamental symmetric and anti-symmetric functions, yes, in which you write symmetric functions as a quotient of two antis. Uh, so here, <coughs> there's a similar somewhat formula. Uh, here, uh, however, look, the uh, roots are written, uh, 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 so a, a symmetric part that we have uh, here for the roots, uh, the, uh, the essential path are anti-symmetric, so this is uh, uh, a bit, uh, quite a bit different. Uh, so look, what we do is, uh, since we have only two minutes, I'm going to spend them in uh, describing to you again the, the formula and showing you one more example. So here uh, you, we have U1 and U2, yes? And um, what, we are going to, what we are going to do is the following. We're going to take an, uh, uh, an eigenvector delta uh, G, delta G alpha, delta alpha G is, so an eigen, eigenvector on the graph G. So delta alpha G of V is equal to, uh, uh, beta is equal to lambda alpha times V. Yes, so that would be, for instance, for uh, uh, our, let's say, uh, for our graphs before, that would be quantum one, quantum two, quantum three, and so on. Yes, this would be our vector V. And then we would write this lambda alpha 
Uh, why don't we, uh, yes, we would write this lambda alpha as uh, 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 sum of ui, where g is a sum of ui. So we we'll write this lambda alpha as a sum of uh, mu i, maybe, where g, the generator g, is, a, uh, is a sum of ui's uh, that you see up there. And then what we're going to do is when we take the Cartesian product here for the ribbon, ribbon, we're going to take uh, at a point uh, uh, here, we're going to take something like mu, mu one to the power uh, two, mu two to the power three times, and on the ribbon, we'll take the vector v. Yes, so this is uh, the, the v is on the graph, yes? So we'll take uh, these powers. So we'll take the same vector v. So let's write this is tensor the vector v. So what we're going to have in this case is when you go in this direction, in the direction of one, you're going to get times mu one. And we're going to get in this direction, you will get times mu two. You see, because what you have here are the powers of mu, yes? So once again, you take here an eigenvector, V eigenvector for G, for the graph G, and you write its eigenvalue as a sum of these mu's. And what, you, what it will give you is the eigenvectors, eigenvectors, for uh, translation, translation on the ribbon, which is exactly what, what uh, these, uh, so it will give you the higher exponents. The translations on the ribbon are exactly the, uh, the higher version of the Coxeter element. Yes, so what we get here are the uh, the the, uh, uh, the is a decomposition of the Coxet element in uh, in uh, eigen I mean the eigenvectors for that uh, for those translations. Yes, the translations commute in the two directions. Do you see? So you have powers of mu one, mu two. When you shift, you multiply by mu one or mu two, depending in which direction you shift. Yes. Uh, all you need here is an eigenvector. And why, uh, why do you have, that's the last question here, why do you need to have the eigenvalue of lambda, the sum, to be the sum of these mu's? Can you see? The sum of the mu's is the sum of the neighbors, yes? And this should be the sum of the neighbors on the graph, yes? So the, uh, so the sum of the neighbors on the graph means exactly you take this vector and you take the sum of neighbors, yes? So if uh, this relation will tell you exactly that it's biharmonic, that the sum of the neighbors on the graph is the same as the sum of the neighbors on the ribbon, yes? Sum of the neighbors on the ribbon is uh, the sum of those UIs and uh, some of the neighbors on the graph is that uh, beta, the eigenvalue, yes? So that's what you do here. That's what this formula represents. You decompose each, each graph into uh, eigenvectors, yes? Which means that you know exactly the sum of neighbors. It's some number times the value at that point, yes? And you, that uh, eigenvalue is G1 and G2. Think of it this way, yes? And you write those eigenvalues as sums of unitaries. Yes, the unitaries are things on the ribbon. You put, uh, you put powers of those unitaries on the ribbon. Yes, then you'll get uh, some. Uh, you'll get exactly among the uh, among the functions which are biharmonic. You'll get the uh, uh, the. Uh, um, eigenvectors for translations. So that's, that's what 
That's, uh, the formula writes for you the fusion and the inner product of roots in these terms, yes? So in terms of these eigenvalues and so on. So that's what we'll do. We'll need one more hour to finish this part and then we'll go to a very crystallographic part completely different from the, from the rest. Uh, with an intermediate one, sorry, the higher matrices. So remember that we're going backwards here. Yes, you're going from your uh, graduate, uh, from your graduate course to the uh, high school course where you learned about matrices, yes? Here we started from the Dinkin diagrams and you go back in time to matrices and those were the hardest ones to find. Yes, the higher matrices. Once you then you go back to graduate uh, studies and study the represent the higher representations of those higher matrices. Exactly. Uh, well, we still have to go backwards one more step to go to matrices. So remember, the theory went from matrices to to uh, roots exactly to the point where Duncan was exactly, well, not uh, ex it's like some of the uh, people here, fresh uh, postdoc, and Gelfand was very scary in his seminar. And uh, so Duncan prepared the, his uh, lecture on uh, root crystallography. He prepared it for a month or two in advance because Gelfand was so scary and he discovered the Dunkin diagrams, yes? Uh, maybe that's my failure, I didn't uh, scare you enough. Okay, very good, see you uh, on Monday.